will tell you the truth. I watched an episode of Voyager recently, and it is shocking how likable Janeway is. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Wednesday Night Gentlemen Multimedia Empire official podcast. You are listening to episode number 48. Uh, This is a show where we like to talk about comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, and every so often everyone's favorite, uh, political discourse. I am your host, Tactic Angel, and with me is my murderous socialist friend, Midget Radio. Hello. Throwing curveballs at you already, buddy. Tactic Angel, that was actually a really great, like, efficient intro. We should, I mean, impressive. And now we have thrown it away. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I just wanted to compliment you. I was overcome. Thank you. Uh... Uh, I hope it brought a tear to everyone's eye who's listening. <laughs> How are you doing, Midget Radio? I am doing okay. Uh, do you have Angel? Do you have a drink with I you? I do. I do. Uh, today, uh, I am drinking the Larceny. 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 I have had that. Yeah. I think. I, I, I think I've had it with you maybe once. I don't remember. I don't think so. No. But maybe. Uh, Kentucky um, straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. I am going with Loch Lomond Reserve. Oh, okay. Which is obviously a Scottish whiskey. And I would highly suggest that you try it sometime because really? I think this is right up your alley. Okay. Uh, a very, uh, a very drinkable scotch. Um, I enjoy it. Nice. I, I like it better than the Glenn Levitt, but um, <sighs> it's tough to beat. But I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, I've had a lot of scotches, and uh, this is this is way up there for me. Okay, sweet. So I don't know. All right, well that those two drinks will definitely help us because uh, we have one topic, and as most of our one topic shows go, uh, usually off the rails. Yeah. Uh, that one topic is Death Wish. Death Wish. 1972, a writer named Brian Garfield pens a book that captures the fear of a nation. American culture seems to be breaking down. Crime and violence seem to be out of control. The book's hero is a man named Paul Benjamin, who is a bleeding heart figure until his wife and daughter are attacked. Uh, with nothing to lose, he buys a gun and takes the fight to the streets. Two short years later... A movie loosely based on the book is released, directed by Michael Winner and starring Charles fucking Bronson. Charlie Bronson. Yeah. As the lead character. Uh, This time a man called Paul Kersey. Uh, The movie is largely panned by critics, uh, but it does ignite a certain amount of uh, discussion in, in the world. Sure. It's certainly a memorable movie. <laughs> uh, Bronson goes on to reprise his roles in four sequels, which can only be described as progressively more embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this brings us to today, uh, where Eli Roth, of all fucking people, directs a modern reimagining of the story. The movie stars Bruce Willis as Dr. Paul Kersey, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as Frank, his younger brother, Camellia uh, Maroney as his daughter, Jordan, and finally, briefly, Elizabeth Shue as his wife, Lucy. (laughs) Midget Radio, you have seen this movie? Mm -hmm. First impressions? Um, my first impression of Death Wish. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean... Overall, I thought it was like it was it was it was pretty okay. Uh, I mean, the things I appreciate about this movie are Vincent D'Onofrio, Elizabeth Shue, um, and the fact that I uh, Eli Roth was surprisingly able to keep in check some of his torture porn, uh, excessive gore sensibilities. Um, uh, good on him. <laughs> I I uh, I agree. With the exception of one shot, I think that he did a, a pretty solid job. Yeah. Of, of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I expected I would, much worse. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was surprised at this movie in several ways. Um, in in one way, I thought it was significantly more on point and thoughtful than I expected it to be. And then mm. another point, I never expected to see a montage in this movie to <laughs> Back in Black, uh, which really annoyed me. That's Eli Roth. Yeah. 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 The, well, I mean, it was a, it was a, a montage that, that uh, if you, if you just put a score over, it feels one way. And if you put back in black over it, yeah, it starts to feel like you don't understand whether this is like, uh, you know, social commentary. Yep. Or an action movie. Yep. And um, ultimately, this this movie does, I feel, kind of tend strongly towards both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's 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 pretty fair. Um, yeah, I'd say it's pretty fair overall. In some respects, I almost kind of appreciate it because it's a movie that, um, I mean, coming out now feels like feels like a pretty strong uh political statement um but i think the fact that eli roth is is essentially not a very good filmmaker (laughs) um (laughs) prevents it from actually becoming that because he is taken in he is taken in stupid movie directions like the montage with the back and black theme Uh, i would say a large chunk of the end of the movie um and then some of the times where he for where he he was like, remember when I made Hostel? Remember that fucking movie? <laughs> yes, we do. Thanks, Eli. Yeah. So I, I don't know. In that respect, I actually kind of uh, appreciate it. Um, because <laughs> it's death. I mean, it's fucking Death Wish. The first movie. Um, the the first the the original movie is not exactly a great film. I love it, but it's not exactly a fucking great film or anything. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say that in terms of in terms of writing this this reimagining goes a long way to improving the the general art of of movie making. Sure. Um cuz the original is uh not not <laughs> not great. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> it's got Charles Bronson in it. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, honestly, I I don't have any real strong feelings about this film either way. Um, there wasn't anything that like jumped out at me in particular that, uh, I, I wanted to talk about really other than, other than it, it has, I gotta say kind of a unique cast. I never would have expected. Um, is that the Elizabeth shoe? Yeah. Elizabeth part? shoe and D'Onofrio actually. Cause I don't, I under, actually... I don't understand. How does he pick movies? Like, how does he pick what he does? I don't understand. <laughs> it just seems kind of random. I, yeah, it is hard. It is hard to tell because in this one, he is kind of just I mean, he's a guy who's down on his luck. He's an everyday schlub. Yeah, uh, he he's embarrassed by the success of his brother. Yeah. And and he's trying to do right. And he's he's got I mean, he's clearly a guy who has fallen down several times in life. Yeah. And and he's he's got a lot of he's got a lot of character for not having a a ton of lines. Yeah. D'Onofrio is just, he's so completely natural. Yeah. It's re- Yeah. It's absurd. Yeah. That like you watch it and you're like, that's Fisk. I know that's Wilson fucking <laughs> Fisk. Yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? Is, the Kingpin is this bumbling fat loser. Right? Just like, okay, this is a guy right. who slammed somebody's head with a car door until it fell off. Like, I just don't mm-hmm. see it. I just don't see it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he does. He does a great job. Uh, Elizabeth Shue. I thought she was mostly just effective as uh, yeah, uh, as lovable wife. Yeah, she is exciting to see her. But yeah, Ventures in babysitting, man. <laughs> <laughs> she actually is in other movies. I know she is, but also Adventures in babysitting. So. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and I don't know. I, I think we'll get into this more into the spoiler parts. I think it goes a long way to to improving the 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 focus of the movie. 
uh, probably the purpose of the book. And uh, I think the one thing I'm going to say before we get into rating and spoilers is yeah. I feel like the reviews of this movie are incredibly unfair. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I mean, looking at the Rotten Tomato score, it's stupid. It's stupid. Sixteen percent. Yeah, it's I mean, sixteen percent of people who <laughs> like you take out the people who would naturally dislike this movie. Yeah, and then you add to it all the people who are like, "Well, I have to hate this movie for what it is." Yeah, because of uh, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and there you go. Yeah. Um, it's it's weird because you look at it and I I looked it up. It was like a sixteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, and on on Google it's like eighty five percent of the people who watch this movie like it. Yeah, and you're like, wow, that's that's a miss. Mm -hmm. not, yeah, not real close. It I does, mean, maybe it's weird. maybe the fifteen percent of the people who will like it will self select, and eighty five percent of those people, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird too, because uh, I was looking at like just some of the scores on. I was just scanning over it on on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's like sometimes if you rate it a five out of ten, they'll say that it's bad, and then sometimes if you rate it a five out of ten, they'll rate it as good. And I'm not sure if they have like an algorithm or if they actually have people going through and reading those reviews and assigning a good or bad index. I'm not sure how they actually do that, and I don't care either. But um, but yeah, I saw a lot of like five out of 10 and like, you know, just sort of halfway, uh, ratings. And I was like, well, that's, I mean, that's not a, that's not, uh, you know, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you give a movie five out of 10, I feel like you're saying, I don't give a fuck. Like I don't give a shit. Well, it's, it's where the, it's where the Metacritic number makes more sense because yeah. Metacritic, you have kind of like the, you know, bad, yeah, good. It's a little more grayscale. Mediocre. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like you can go and be like, you know, this movie is not offensive and it's not memorable or great. Yeah. Um, it's it's two hours and take of it what you will. Yeah. Um and I I don't know. Yeah. I think that I think if you were going to sit down and watch a Death Wish movie, this would be the Death Wish movie to do. For sure. Uh, I mean, I got, I'd got. i still prefer the original to this one, but sure. Because it's, what, like 40 minutes shorter? Well, because, I, I mean, seriously, actually, the one, the most significant gripe I have about this movie um, is Bruce Willis. Uh, I understand I may be alone on that, but one, I, I did kind of feel overall like Bruce Willis was just i don't know man his performance in this i just felt like he was phoning it in a lot like in a lot of scenes um and charlie i mean charles bronson are you kidding me charles fucking bronson i he could I, do basically anything <laughs> he's awesome yeah, charles bronson but, kicks ass i think the thing about charles bronson and actually bruce willis is that that you do like them for who they are as opposed to usually like the extraordinary thespian performance right put on. yeah it's like yeah you don't watch die hard and and love bruce willis because bruce willis is some shakespearean right. fucking actor right yippee kaye right all that stuff and and at the same time like if you go into charles bronson stuff like he's got a couple good roles but like <laughs> some of his best performances are like magnificent seven where he yeah. doesn't have a lot to yeah. do but he's great in that one speech that he gives <laughs> to the kids and it's just like yes yeah charles charlie bronson, bronson. fuck yeah yeah so all yeah. right so midget radio if you were going to give this uh rating from uh one to five old school netflix what what is it uh i'm gonna i'm at a two and a half solidly two and a half on this movie which i think rotten tomatoes would say that i think it's bad <laughs> apparently would you would you prefer that you think that they say that it's good or <laughs> i think which side of the fence would you would i think you they should just not film? count my review <laughs> just don't fucking count it <laughs> would you recommend this film to anyone um i guess for anybody who gives a shit about death wish yeah sure 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is not it is not a disgrace to the name of Death Wish. Oh God, no! I mean that one that would be kind of hard to do. Like I don't know, you'd have to like become a I don't know I don't know how would you disgrace Death Wish? Good God! How would you disgrace Death Wish? He becomes a pacifist, or like he, like he's he is a pacifist and then he remains a pacifist <laughs> throughout uh, the entire actually, movie. Like, <laughs> uh, actually, one of the worst episodes of Star Trek Voyager is named Death Wish. Oh, is it? God, I don't remember. It's it's the episode where the Q is hiding in the comet prison. Oh yeah, yeah. It it makes uh, no sense. Well, no sense at all. Yeah, Voyager. Tactic Angel doesn't like it. I don't want to fight about it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop bringing up Star Trek. God damn it. <laughs> I got some more Star Trek coming up. <laughs> <I know>. Um. <laughs> if I were to if I were to give it a rating, I'd probably say a three. I would give it a three. Okay. Um, I have no problem with this movie. I think it's uh, perfectly okay. I would have done without uh, the one scene that is body horror, and <laughs> yeah. I would have done. But I I do want to talk about that, and we're going to get to that in the spoilers. Okay. And I would have I would have done without the back and black uh, nonsense. Yeah. If you're gonna put a montage into a movie that's supposed to be uh serious and and sort of dour <laughs> um this i'm a i'm dr paul kersey i'm a badass thing uh does not play with the tone of the rest of the movie yeah yeah so, that's where i'm at that's where i'm at okay cool spoilers <laughs> spoiler tag boosh who's starting this you. I think you have more things to say about this movie than I do. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to expand on this. I think that they do a much better job writing a tighter plot in this movie than they do in the original Death Wish. I don't know <laughs> about the book. Yeah. That whole, like, I know, I remember in the original movie, the whole, like, jaunt to Arizona and all that stuff, like, was like kind of out of nowhere um yeah i mean i I'd, I'd was agree it arizona that. or was it texas i thought it was i thought it was arizona it could be texas I, maybe that guy may have had a cowboy hat i don't remember anymore i think he did he may have had a cowboy hat i thought and, it was arizona and it's like but i thought it was like either way that man is not a character <laughs> he's a stereotype no <laughs> No. Yeah, I I I'd agree with that. Um there wasn't I, I don't feel like there was any um like downtime. Um nothing felt nothing like really felt too left field as far as the plot. Um and I actually thought they did like a pretty decent job with the family in the beginning. You know, that can always be kind of fucking boring. We got to develop these people so that we can kill them and you feel bad about it. But <laughs> but overall that that stuff was, you know, all that stuff was pretty decent. Actually, I like that quite a bit. Mm. Uh, you do spend a lot more time with the Kerseys at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Uh, which which actually, I mean, we get a little bit of Frank. Uh, we get the the characterization that Frank is is kind of a, a numbskull and he's had he's been down on his luck. He needs yeah. money. He he's basically relying on the good graces of his, his brother, who's lending him not insignificant amounts. No, of money. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and. And I, I mean, I love that scene later in the movie where he just feels so deflated. Yeah. Um, but but you have so much of the the brotherly spirit between the, the two of them. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's, uh, you know, that it's perfect. That, like, I don't think Bruce Willis is giving as much of a performance as D'Onofrio. I think D'Onofrio is the whole fucking thing. But, yeah, and, and I think Bruce is... <laughs> See, I'll He's be there. honest. He's bouncing this, it back, but this was originally supposed to star someone else, and one of the people that I saw that it might have possibly starred was uh, Russell Crowe. Oh wow, that would have been interesting, and and I would have been interested to see Russell Crowe yeah. in this in this, and like when when they when they show it, it's like it's Bruce Willis, and you know. For you and me, Bruce Willis is like, yes, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I mean, we're there, yeah, for sure. Uh, he's he's a cool guy. He's made uh 
at least one of the greatest action movies oh, ever God, made. Yes, yeah. And um certainly he's been in in a number of other good good films. Yeah. But <laughs> the problem with Bruce Willis is he actually has too much charm and charisma and probably not enough depth. Yeah. And and so when they said that it's like I really don't want this film to be uh tongue in cheek ha ha I'm getting yeah. vengeance. Yeah. And and I mean for the most part we don't get that. Yeah. For the most part um he plays it straight. Uh I don't I don't think that he failed. I don't think he knocked it out of the park. I yeah. think he he delivered a, a passable performance. Um, but I mean, if you got, <laughs> I mean, Russell Crowe can play a wounded character. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, well, it was weird too. Cause I was trying to figure out like why, cause I mean, I'm a, I'm also a huge fan of, of, of unbreakable and I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. I mean, that's, he's playing a fairly somber character in that film as well. Um, but I just found him a lot more compelling, um, in that movie. And I don't know if it was because the story was a little more compelling, um, or if there was something about his performance in that, but I don't know, man. I mean, even the, even in the scenes where like he had to show a little something, um, like standing over, you know, his daughter's hospital bed, right? Like my daughter's in, in handcuffs and he's pieces of shit are, you know, out there free. Like it's, I, I don't know. I just felt like his delivery on that was a little flat. Um, it just didn't seem like he was he was really in it. Maybe it's just me, but um, but I, I don't know. It just didn't come across, across as... I don't feel like he really invested much. <laughs> I, I can see that. And in part, I think that, that was hurt because I think within 15 or 30 seconds of that, you are in the back and black. That's, that could be too. Yeah, that could be part of it. Yeah, that could and, be part and of it. it and it will mess up yeah. your, the emotional resonance of that. Yeah. Like, okay, I think they did a, a really good job. There, there are a couple of differences, like modernizations and differences that they did with this movie. And it, almost in every case, I think it, from, from just a story perspective, makes it a better film. Okay. Because like, I mean, for one, I'm just going to say this. The original movie uh, has almost no buildup. Yeah. And and uh, Charles Bronson's character has a daughter, and her daughter, his daughter, basically has no character. Yeah, she's like fucking, yeah, she exists, and then she's catatonic. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> also, we, we have to, we have to... Like, see, the wife gets gets murdered and she gets raped. Yeah. And it's like, uh, this is this is terrible. Yeah. And and I don't know if it was because of the day that I saw it or just how how the universe found me that day or what it was. If I had eaten some, eaten some, eaten some, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Um. But I I remember like when they get to the point where the guys are in the house. I there was just a part of my me in my head that was like i would like to be almost anywhere except for this movie theater yeah. right now yeah because like i just had a pervasive sense of dread yeah about the whole thing uh now thankfully it doesn't get into like a, a graphic rate we do get a, a little handsy yeah here and and certainly that would be i mean that's wrong and, and traumatizing but it's wrong and traumatizing on a, a different level <laughs> yeah as as we saw in the prior Death Wish movie. And then I think like they 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 did a decent job with Jordan's character. Yeah. They made her seem uh, you know, likable. She's young, she's yeah. going to college, she's got her whole life in ahead of her. And then she gets shot in the head. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And like it's interesting because like you don't have the original movie where she's not catatonic and then suddenly she is. Yeah. Instead you're like, she's shot in the head. She's in a coma. Like if she wakes up, she may be pretty scrambled. Yeah. Uh, 
she may not be able to walk. She may not be able to go to college. She's uh, basically while she's asleep, she might die. Uh, even if she wakes up, all her hopes and dreams may be washed away, uh, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, and like that, I think adds a little bit more emotional engagement for the audience yeah. that we get to, that we get to meet his family uh, we particularly don't want them to be uh, murdered or injured. Yeah. And then uh, the state that she's in is is much more of a limbo uh, where we don't really know what to expect yeah. as we go through uh, the story. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. This film does a way better job developing the, the family, at least, um, I also, as characters. I also thought that, like... When they said when they showed that he was Paul Kersey and he's a doctor, like that does one uh, that does two things really at the same time. The the one is that it is uh, more reprehensible the things that he does. Well, isn't he a because, doctor in the original movie? No, he's a he's a real estate developer. Okay, he goes down to. Arizona or Texas because he's designing a subdivision. That's and, right. And the guy's like, hey, you don't want to get rid of these hills. Yeah. These hills are the character. That's right. By the way, I have a firearm. You want to go shoot some guns? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so like in this one, he's a doctor. He tries to save the cop. He tries to save the scumbag. Yeah. Um, who shot the cop. And, and it's just like, you get immediately the sense this is, this is a guy who is going to do the right thing, but he's clearly not because this is a movie called Death Witch. (laughs) Right. So I, I think that adds to it. And then at the same time, I think since we, since we can relate more to the things that he's feeling and and because he is in actually a special position where he's especially not supposed to be hurting people. Yeah. That that we can get a sense more of of just how much Paul Kersey has lost. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I can um, see that. It's, you know, it yeah, it's sure. It 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 adds a little more depth. Um I mean, I think it's more depth to things that are already there in the original film. Um but I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna, I, I think you're making a solid point here, um, that it fleshes these characters out a little bit more and adds maybe, um, yeah, just a, just a stronger sense of depth to, to their characters. I mean, the irony of the, 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 that he is a doctor who's doing this, um, adds a little more of a punch for sure. Mm hmm. Um, they introduce uh, a father figure whose name I think is Ben. Uh, he's, uh, his wife's father, so his father-in-law, and they travel oh, back to yeah. They travel back to Connecticut, yeah. And his father-in-law has actually a better purpose than the stereotype <laughs> from the original movie. Okay, and and this is not just because he played Admiral Janeway on. <laughs> On an episode of Star Trek Voyager, yeah, where where Janeway dies, but unfortunately undies by the end <laughs> of the episode. So he goes out, buries his his wife. They're driving in the car. Ben stops the car and takes it off the the road and chases down some poachers and then starts shooting at them. Yeah, which I think is a little bit of an overreaction, probably. But <laughs> I don't know. I think typically you are allowed to shoot poachers. But anyway, I have no idea. I, I'm not sure. Um, he says a line basically like, uh, you know, you, you got you got to take things into your own hands. You can't wait for the police to come here and whatever. Yeah. And that that's kind of his first bump in the direction of vigilantism right? yeah that makes a lot more sense than hey let's make this subdivision by the way <laughs> we're in you know 
Southwest, we like to shoot guns, shoot guns with me. I got you a gun. Have fun. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, um, I, I mean, I, I guess so. I think the thing that the, I, I mean, I see what you're saying. Um, but the fact that it's somebody from the Southwest, uh, that's presenting this information to, uh, Paul Kersey, a New York, you know, uh, fucking intellectual, I guess, um, a, a, a pacifist. I mean, basically a liberal, like there's at least that element there. So I don't know. It, it's not, um, I don't know if it adds much more. Um, no, I, I don't think that it, I don't. Okay. I'm not saying that this is part of the stuff that's adding to the depth, but this, this is a better bump for Paul's character towards engaging individual antiism. I guess so. Because, yeah. Because after this, we see him, he's on his computer, uh, he's watching whatever, gun porn. And yeah. Yeah. And then he he's walking by uh, that alley and, and the two guys are harassing, I guess, maybe a prostitute or I'm not really sure who that was. Yeah, I wasn't sure who that was either. It's pretty, pretty dark. Yeah. Uh, basically doing probably something they shouldn't do to somebody being abusive he's like, to someone yeah <laughs> and he's like stop it and he gets the shit kicked out of him yeah uh for his efforts yeah so like we're seeing like sort of a progression towards uh you can't uh rely on on just the state to protect you and this is why he is going to take the law into his own hands right i think the th- the third part of that if if all lists are perfectly stated in three parts is uh when he goes into the police station and he just sees like what are all these like cards on the wall yeah it's like these are all crimes and it's like what do the colors mean well the red crimes are solved and the blue crimes yeah are not solved yeah and he sees just as his wife's name there and it's just one of hundreds of of cases and it and like that kind of uh that kind of goes to the hopelessness of of where the character is sure cuz he's he's lost his wife his daughter's future is, is questionable at best uh he can't go he can't go to work because that's where his daughter is <laughs> yeah so what are you going to do what are you got like i think they do a lot more uh here to try to make him a sympathetic character yeah um, i could see and, yeah yeah i mean he go if he goes to work he's gonna see his daughter in a coma if he goes to work he's gonna see his daughter in handcuffs yeah uh, like these are all these are a lot of things that really make you feel for kind of why someone would would fall into this yeah. not that anybody actually does yeah but, you know yeah yeah that's fair yeah yeah, I mean, the, I think the first movie is more is more interested in Charles Bronson becoming like and doing the vigilante work, and this movie is a little bit more interested in how uh, Kersey became, I guess, or was driven to uh, the vigilanteism. Uh, yeah, or at least it does a little maybe, more work but, toward that. But th- but this also has a lot more variety in terms of. Uh, sort of what Paul Kersey does, right? As far as... Because um, Paul Kersey, 1974, he basically walks around and waits for people to mug him. Yeah, yeah, he buys a gun and, and waits, yeah, and that's it, yeah. <laughs> and then he blows him away and he runs away. Yeah. And this happens like two or three times. Then he gets shot in the shoulder, he passes out. Right. And... Uh, <laughs> the cops are just like, why don't you just leave? <laughs> yeah. Get out of town. Yeah. So he goes to Chicago. Yeah. Where we pick up with Death Wish 2. Yep. <laughs> um, I think that actually starts with his daughter getting raped again. Yeah, or probably. Yeah, or I, yeah. Cousin or something. It's just, like, then it just gets ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> really on the nose. Yeah. By the end of it, I think he's buying like science fiction uh sidearms yeah oh yeah death wish three yeah it's fucking like insane gang war shit like it's ridiculous fucking all-out urban warfare um 
do 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 i have more i have actually lots of things written down about, this. <laughs> about death witch <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, okay. Let me put it this way: I'll I'll skip some of the stuff that's on here. This movie, if you were going to talk about the the concept of personal defense and or vigilanteism, right? This movie is a much more fertile uh, ground of examples than the original. Yeah, but I don't think that was the original's point, though, right? No, probably not. I mean, the original was cons- was was like, is a if you want to assign any sort of like larger value to that movie, it would be just the question of ving- vigilanteism, not about a person's right to self defense or anything like that, or the 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 Second Amendment or anything like that. It's about one man taking the law into his own hands. That's what the first movie is about. And this movie, I will agree with you, is not only about that, um, but also includes, um, I and maybe just because of the time we live in, um, questions a little bit more. You know, <laughs> person's right to bear arms and the the attitude, I guess, or the, or the philosophy or the ethics or whatever surrounding. Um, even just the idea of, of, of self-defense or home defense or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it does, it does go into that. Um, but okay. So the original death wish was very much a book as I understand it. Cause I have not read it. Neither have I. That basically tells a similar story but is fairly negative on the idea of vigilanteism. Sure. Okay. The Charles Bronson movie is fairly unapologetic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For vigilanteism. <laughs> yeah. It celebrates it to, to a degree. Yeah. And honestly, in... I don't know what the the laws were, you know, 30, 43, 6, 8 years ago. I don't know. 43, 6, 8. That was, no, that was the right number, 43, 6, 8. Uh-huh. <laughs> 4,368 years ago. Yeah. I don't know what what the the laws were and as as they regard as they regard self-defense, but for the most part if somebody is going to mug you and they have a gun, and you have a gun, you can shoot them. Yeah. If they have a knife, I'm fairly certain you can shoot them. Yeah. I'm not I'm not even sure if you can't just straight up shoot them anyway. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, in the original Death Wish, yes, you have a guy who's walking around the city and he's just blowing away people who threaten to to mug him or do physical violence upon him. Yeah. It is vigilanteism, but it's hardly illegal. Right? Uh, okay. I mean, on a case by case basis, two guys, he's walking down a set of stairs, two guys appear at the bottom and he's like, they're like, give us your wallet, old man, and takes out a gun. And it's like, you can't run away because there's a guy behind you too and he takes out a gun too and he shoots all of them. Right. It's like, honestly, yes. If you'd stuck around, the cops would probably take a police report. They'd probably confiscate your firearm for the meantime. Right. And you'd go through due process, but you would not be found guilty in most cases. In this case, I think he's probably up Schitt's Creek because he probably had to register his firearm because... He lives in New York. Right. Uh, but like. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I don't know what the con- and concealed carry. Lo- I don't know what that is, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you get you get into things like that. Yeah. And, but but for the actual big ticket crime of I shot a man, probably not. Yeah. Probably not what you're going to prosecute him. For. Right. Um. This movie has a lot more stuff going on and it's actually it's actually really interesting <laughs> uh, because if you wanted to talk about it um 
you would be able to look at it from like what happens uh we see Kersey tries to stop two men assaulting a woman at night yeah right he doesn't have a gun at this point he basically gets his ass handed to him for his efforts right uh Kersey guns down two or three men carjacking and kidnapping another person Uh uh-huh now what what's likely going to happen to that other person is that they are probably going to get uh raped and or murdered on top of that right but they are at least going to be kidnapped and at least going to be carjacked yeah uh Kersey guns down a, a violent gang member who's pushing drugs and and actually kind of pushing a lifestyle onto young kids. Yeah. Uh another random person uh gets shot for trying to stop a thug doing something apparently illegal uh with a woman in an alley. Uh Kersey oh, yeah. shoots up <laughs> an, an illegal fencing operation. Uh he tortures a man, then drops a car <laughs> on his head. Yes, he does. Uh he shoots up a night club. Yeah. And then he defends his house from a home invasion. Yeah. Uh, like, there are certainly degrees of what you would call vigilantism here. Yeah. And there are certainly things that are are way more uh, uh, understandable only from a character point of view. And then from, like, an actual practical political <laughs> point of view. Right. Right? Okay. Because like if I were if I were being carjacked or whatever and some random person stepped in and, and shot the people doing it, or like the I think it was a, a cop down in South Carolina was being like some guy was just beating the shit out of him and had him down on the ground and was like trying to go for his gun and a guy with a a civilian with a firearm came up. And shot the guy who was attacking the police officer. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Absolutely the right thing to do. Sure. Um, Granted, that guy also had the uh, advantage of the police officer telling him, shoot the man. (laughs) Sure, that helps. But if you wanted to talk about, like, your right to self-defense, what what is the appropriate limit of of self-defense? Yeah. Uh, what part of this is is actually legitimately vigilantism like this is a a much better film to do that with because it does offer you what like seven eight examples that i that i just went through uh i mean i guess so uh i get i guess so i i'm not sure that it's all that fruitful though like i don't know that it's any more fruitful than what we saw in the the original death wish film but, because but the original, he just shoots people right, but, and he runs away. Yeah, but who cares, right? I mean, like, what? Because the because because in none of these situations is the downside or the risk or the, the or or any of that even remotely considered, um, from the point of view of like of of the vigilante, right? Which is what makes kind of the end of this movie a little ridiculous, um, because he just straight up opens fire in a nightclub full of innocent people. And even during the carjacking, he's just shooting at the fucking car. Now, conveniently and helpfully, no innocent bystanders caught any fucking bullets um, in that in that scene. And he didn't inadvertently kill someone he didn't intend to actually kill. Um, so, I mean, the movie doesn't the movie does not even fucking dare to broach that side of it. Um and and neither does the original Death Wish. So I'm just I'm not sure that it's really presenting anything, like I, I, presenting anything unique or really interesting or more interesting um, to to discuss with respect to the the question of of vigilantism. Because the, I mean, this well, movie's a fantasy an, as much as the original movie is. If you had an unlimited imagination, there's nothing in this film that you couldn't come up with it as as far as you know what if. What if this? What if that? Yeah. Um, I mean, there is a, there is a little bit of consequence with the the guy who uh, was kind of being a copycat who we see get blown away. Right. Yeah. In, in the police report. Yeah. Uh, so it's not it's not completely bloodless on the other side, but I I get what you're saying. Um, he shoots into that car 
at night. Right. Uh, apparently not really knowing what he's doing. Yeah, having and apparently he, almost never shot a gun before. I mean, it's... <laughs> he never... I mean, he doesn't hit the, the woman. Now, the woman's probably in the backseat. It's right. probably unlikely that he's going to hit her. Um, uh, but maybe, yeah. <laughs> relatively unlikely? Maybe. Why was so, she in the backseat? I, they were kidnapping her. Well, but there was a carjacking, right? Like, wouldn't she have been the front seat passenger? Like, did they take her out and then move her to the back? That's fucking weird in a car. I think she came to the door and he's like, stop it. And they threw her in the oh, back. Maybe, seat maybe that's and got in the car. And he <laughs> killed the one person. And right. even in that scene, saw like that, the guy, and... <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, this is not a movie that is not without its problems from my point. Of right, view. right. I no, I, and and I don't, I don't mean to push back on you too, too, too much here. Um, it's just like it is also a fantasy. Um, and it, it doesn't, it, it, I don't, I don't remotely think that it considers um the other side of of this issue. Um, I mean, there's some, what? there's some lip service too. Um. The, to that mostly with like the 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 radio talk show hosts uh all of that stuff interspersed throughout the film there's some like lip service to is this the thing that we really want and is this okay and whatever but i mean beyond that it's it's not it, it would have been actually you know it, if, if it wanted to take the issue seriously if it wanted to do something a little bit more legitimately then he should have killed some fucking people on accident uh some people should have gotten injured like it but this movie plays out perfectly where every decision he makes uh, is is absolutely the right decision and works out in his favor. Um, so, you know, um, I mean, that's why two and a half stars for me o- o- overall. I mean, it's not offensive. It's not anything bad, but it's not. I don't know. I can't I can't give it much more um, than that. Well, I mean, OK, so. It, it does ignore sort of the, the the potential human tragedy that that even happens from from what he's doing. Yeah. So let's say, let's say that this movie ended differently and Paul Kersey is is caught and yeah. he's uh, put on trial. Yeah, and and some kid stands up in the middle of the trial and says, "You killed my dad," like the guy does in The Punisher. Yeah. Now the the Punisher is another vigilante. Yeah, and the guy who he killed absolutely deserved Fuck it. yeah. But you can still see that that kid is suffering because he lost his father. Yeah. Now, to him, his father wasn't a guy who was out there, you know, trying to rape women and, and rob them and <laughs> right. shoot them. Right. To him, he was just dad. Yeah. And, and like, you don't know. Like, does the ice cream man go home every day? Right. <laughs> his just... fucking, like, eight kids or whatever with three different women. <laughs> Well, that seems stereotypical. <laughs> yeah, it is, but this is a, a movie of stereotypes. But yeah, <laughs> um, but I, I, I get it. And actually, like, I do want to address that. I actually really like the ice cream man segment of this. Really? Okay. I, I really did because you get to see Paul Kersey. He shows up. He's trying to like connect with this kid, and the kid doesn't want to talk to him. Yeah. And and eventually he kind of gets a, a little bit out of the kid uh his position as a physician oh man that rhymes wow that's um, pretty good position as a physician <laughs> gives him the opportunity of finding out about where this kid lives yeah and then he goes out and he just guns this guy down yeah which is just like fascinating i guess yeah i mean it was kind of funny yeah <laughs> But it's like, uh, but see, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm a little surprised at that, at that reaction from you, because to me, like that scene felt very much movie stupid. Just like, I mean, just like, it, it, not all that, not a far cry from the back and black montage stuff, right? Because the ice cream man is like, "Who are you?" and he's like, "Your last customer." Blam, blam, blam. <laughs> I mean, it's such an action movie line and an action movie scene. It's such a trope, you know, and I, I, it, I mean, I enjoyed it, but you know, it's, it is, it's, but like, it's, but at the same time, like, I think it's because the kid beforehand and you're like, man, that sucks. Yeah. And there are definitely people out there who uh, are in certain positions where they're basically 
uh, <laughs> bullied into, pushed into I have bad situations. No fucking doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. And and like if somebody were to just walk up to them and just shoot the shit out of their problems, like yeah. there's a part of you that's like, well, it's wrong, and then there's a part of you that says, but. Yeah, and that's I, but and I think that's part of what what Death Wish was about. The first because I mean that movie's coming out when in the seventies and it takes place in, in fucking Manhattan for a reason, you know. In the same sense that this movie takes place in fucking Chicago now for a goddamn reason. Um, Is Chicago not nice? I thought uh, they apparently, had really nice. I mean, mostly like the West Side, I think, and the South Side. That's what you want to stay away from. I mean, the city itself. Nobody's gunning down people on Michigan Avenue, but doesn't you know. he live? <laughs> he lived on in Highland Park. He was in. He was well. I know the dude in the beginning called him Lakeshore Drive, but they did say the city, and I don't remember. Or the, I guess, is it a city or township or whatever? I don't fucking know. I mean, oh, Chicago is so like Chicago is like the fucking unicron of <laughs> Illinois. It just it just it just consumes everything. That's a Transformers but, the movie reference, by the way, for anybody who didn't unicron. Yeah, but Lakeshore I mean, Drive, <laughs> Lakeshore Drive only starts um, just a little bit short of the McCormick Center, and then it it runs north, right so downtown already, Chicago up to yeah. So I mean, you're. These are this is a north side suburb, and I'm that's fairly what I'm assuming. Said, yeah, it didn't. I'm fairly it certain they said like Highland that. Park, and at a Man. certain point, I'm like, this guy is this guy is a physician <laughs> who lives in a $750,000 house or higher. Yeah, uh, most of that's land value and, and whatnot. Oh, uh, yeah, and he doesn't have a home alert. System? I know that was a little weird. I thought that was weird too. I was like, where's the fucking ADT sticker? <laughs> yeah. Your front door, motherfucker. But, I mean, like, there are little things like that, that that got to me. Yeah. Um actually, uh we'll we'll save the part that, that really uh got to me a little bit more. Okay. Uh for later. But <laughs> I I I think that this this gives you more opportunity to relate to the characters and it gives you more opportunity to think about the nature of it. And I don't think that it actually glorifies vigilantism in the same sense that the original did. Mm. And one of the reasons why I think that is okay. because Jordan Kersey wakes up. Jordan Kersey, I don't know if that was her name. Whoever I think that the is the fuck name. his daughter was yeah. in in the 1974 version, she never wakes up. I can't he remember because I, I he remember there's gets some... on a plane and leaves. Yeah. But like as soon as he as soon as he realizes his daughter is fine. Yeah. Or, you know, alive, better, going to be able to live, he's like, I'm gonna give this up. Yeah. And and then you do have like the sort of uh, you know the the elevator scene, and you're like, oh, this is whatever. That was th- th- dumb. that's an action movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, he was willing to see that what he was doing was not good. Yeah, that it was not ideal. That he that what was more important that is he is there for the people who he still has. Yeah. And you never get that with the with the original. That is true. That is and true. I, yeah. I don't think watching a scene where a physician knocks a man unconscious, <laughs> ties him up, cuts his leg open, and starts pouring acid onto the largest <laughs> nerve in the body. Yeah. I don't think anybody's looking at that scene and thinking, man, this is really glorifying violence for me. <laughs> Like that is that is a bad scene. Yeah. Like, um, and and of course the body thing is there too. Yeah. Because when when they drop the oh man. Yeah, it's it's a little stupid. Yeah. All the pudding. Yeah. Comes out of his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I I think it has that going for it, and also that they do wrap it up in a stupid action movie thing. Yeah is it's a little bit more fulfilling from just watching it because the other one just kind of goes out with a whimper. It's like, 
Yeah. Mr. Kersey, we know what you've been doing. Yeah. And we know that you work for an organization that has all these offices all over the country. <laughs> so what we're trying to say to you is get a transfer. Yeah. And never come back to our city. Yeah. And and it's just like, seriously? <laughs> well, you got the scene with him doing the finger point at the end of the movie, which I love. Um but I don't know. At the same time, it's like it's almost unfair because the movies, I, I I guess in terms of remakes, did this movie take what the original Death Wish did well and improve upon it? Um, that's probably a fair assessment. That's probably a fair assessment. But the original Death Wish did it first, you know. Um, oh yeah, I mean it's and his okay. and his finger point, Charlie Bronson's finger point at the end of the fucking first Death Wish movie is fantastic. Um, and that and it was new and it was perfect and it was and it was great. Um, so I I mean I love that's the end of Death Wish for me is him arriving in Chicago <laughs> and seeing some shit go down and giving yeah. him the little. <laughs> it's a great scene. Um, so yeah, I don't know. For me, like for me, I I I I I, I gotta say, like I appreciate I appreciate. Um, the things you've said uh, uh, about this film. And I think it's, I think they're on point. Um, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think um, this movie does a better job uh, developing the characters for sure. Um, and I think in that sense, um, it's, it, it does have a, a little bit more depth to it. Um, but even, I mean, even despite all that, and, and you're making a solid argument, I got to say, but even despite all of that, um, I still I still have to come down on the first movie um, because of Charles Bronson and because it was, you know, because it was the original Um, and, you know, because like that guy, the one man, one fucking man um, who decides to take a one ordinary fucking citizen who decides to take the law into his own hands, having experienced this horrific event um, involving his family. Like that's the meat and potatoes of the, of, of of these fucking films. Um, So um, I, I don't know. That's that. It just that's what makes the movie work. At the end of the day, did this movie improve on some of the ancillary stuff? Yes, um, absolutely. I don't know if it's if it's all that more significantly interesting beyond that. Like like extending into the sort of political or social conversation. I I don't know. I'm kind of still I'm kind of still out on that a little bit. Well, here's here's the thing, and this is the thing that I was I was holding back. Um, and the sense that this movie tries to, and to a certain degree, does engage the exploration to a person's right to violence or the right to protect themselves or whatever. Right. Um, this movie does parrot in a sort of lazy way (laughs) the standard uh often repeated lines that we hear about guns um i mean it's honestly pretty pretty trite and it's all high level i don't know how you want to say it because this is a conversation we have a lot yeah in america because um we don't know how to behave ourselves very well Mm -mm. but like you hear things like when seconds matter, cops are minutes away. Right. And you're like, right. Or, and then they go in and, you know, you have uh, hot pants, Bethany, the gun slut. Right. And she's, she's like, over here we have knives. Yeah. And over here we have guns. Yeah. And over there we got rifles and badass everywhere. Yeah. And getting, getting an automatic rifle is totally easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we just fill out the form. Nobody fails the class. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty funny, but yeah. <laughs> well, and and this is the thing, and I don't know how to take that because, like, the people who are writing this are undoubtedly Hollywood people, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to like when I hear that line, like, I I don't know. For the most part, I've heard that the people who run gun shops aren't exactly pushing guns on you in this manner but that may be a difference between where i'm located and where they're located i you know i think it just i think it depends i think it depends because the gun shop thing you're always gonna get 
Like I, I mean, I've been to a few, and there's one that I really love here in 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 Arizona. But you always get the fucking, I mean, you always get the standard sales pitch, like, and it's always what if shit. It's always like hypothetical what if shit, which has always annoyed me. What if you're on your way to? What if you're on the way to the store, and like immediately it's like, I go to the store pretty fucking frequently. What do you mean? What if I'm on the way to the store? And some guy, right? Like, I've done this a million fucking times. What are you talking about? I've been to the store billions of times without a fucking weapon. Just caught, stop trying. I don't know. You almost feel like they're fucking insurance salesmen at the point. God damn. What if they, you know, trying to sell me volcano insurance? God damn it. I'm here. I'm already here. I'm interested in a gun because whatever. <laughs> Stop but, trying to scare me, but yeah. What, what I'm saying is, like, I don't know where that line comes from. Because in, in part, it's like, well, it might be just because this person's trying to sell you a weapon. So they're trying to make it sound like it's way easier than it is. Sure, of course. Yeah. It, it might be because the writer is unfamiliar with <laughs> how long it actually takes to get a firearm, particularly in the state of Illinois. Yeah. And... And it's just parroting something that you hear like those fucking kids and they're like, oh, it's easier to plan. It's easier to buy a gun than it is to plan uh, a weekend with your friends. You're like, your friends suck. <laughs> well, in Air- I, it, I can tell you in Arizona, it ain't shit, <laughs> but <laughs> that's Arizona for you. But OK, this is this is Illinois. Yeah, this, this takes is, place, it takes in, place Chicago. in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and I don't know if they just breeze over that line also because the fact that it is as hard as it is to get a gun in Illinois is probably to the movie's detriment. <laughs> Cause if you really understand what it is, like Paul Kersey, his daughter wakes up and he seems to sort of immediately come upon a wide arsenal of firearms yeah. and and I understand that she might have been in the hospital for what, like a, a week yeah. after she woke up. I don't up. know. That is, it is kind of hard to tell the timeline on this movie, but yeah, it it is a little bit. She was she seemed to have missed at least a semester, probably a year. Yeah, of college. it seemed like kind of, yeah. Um, then she wakes up, and it feels like maybe a week or two. Yeah. Now, I can tell you one thing: the state of Illinois promises you. That if you apply for a firearm identification card, yeah. that they will respond in 30 days. Okay. And that when I did that, they absolutely responded within two months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the maximum amount of time it takes is 30 days. Yeah. So it's pretty much gonna take twice as long as that. So like you're off the you're off the chart already. Yeah. In terms of like the timeline making any sort of sense. Then you have a three-day waiting period. Uh, this movie seems to casually equate automatic and semi-automatic weaponry. Uh, yeah. The one one of which is relatively easy to buy compared to the other. Yeah. Um, because if you want to get an automatic rifle, which he has at the end, which, which actually was, did make me laugh quite a bit. Because it was ridiculous, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. Yeah. It was. You want the assault rifle coffee table. Yep, I definitely want because the assault you, rifle coffee table in my basement of all fucking places. <laughs> the, the truth is that he has several assault rifle coffee tables. They're all They're over all the place. assault rifle cabinets, assault rifle toiletry, like it's everywhere. And this is my ballistic knife salt shaker. <laughs> so anyway, like Again, he's that's got all the, the stuff about this movie that I kind of appreciate. <laughs> Because he he stands up, I'm mean, like he kicks the bottom of the thing, mm. the, the gun s- swings out, and he yep. blows the guy away. It works and just like in the commercial. Yeah, <laughs> in a squib fest that I have not seen <laughs> in 20 years. Yeah, and I laughed my fucking ass yeah. off at that it's point. Ridiculous. <laughs> and those were real squibs. That which appreciate that appreciate that. Give me some practical effects. Thank you, Eli, for at least that. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, <laughs> so you want you want that gun that he has, which apparently is is an actual M16 or an 
an M4 or something. Okay, yeah. Uh, in that family. That pretty quick. Uh, you have to apply for a Class 3 uh, federal permit yeah. to own that weapon. Yeah. Because you can't have... Uh, you can't have a short-barreled rifle. You can't have a sawed-off shotgun. These are all uh, controlled weapons. Most people don't go through the effort because it's uh, relatively expensive to yeah. do so. It takes a while, yeah, forever. I don't know exactly how long, but I don't know anyone who's bothered to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I mean, like... That's another one of the little things that's like if you wanted to get in into the the propaganda of of the whole gun issue. Yeah. This this movie does not do you any favors there. Yeah. Because because it's brushing over the one thing. And then on the other <laughs> hand, it is still making. Yeah. Because honestly, the question is, if somebody were to invade your house violently. Yeah. Would you have the right to shoot them? Of course. The answer is obviously. Yes. I yeah. mean. Yeah, I mean, what are your chances of that happening? Well, I mean, they're uh, pretty exceedingly small. Yeah, and but if you want to plan for that, I guess you should have the right to do so. Sure, sure. And and I don't know. I don't know where that all comes out in this movie. I, it's, see, and I, and I don't know. And that's where I feel like I, I don't know. Maybe that's a maybe that's one of the difference because I don't. <laughs> I don't feel. That there is any weight behind the argument that there is anyone who thinks that you don't have the right to that. That you, that you, that, that, that all of the, all, you don't have like a right to fucking defend yourself against a home and like, I just don't think that there's anyone that actually believes that. I think like, I guess as far as like, what does this movie contribute to the sort of political landscape of america i don't think it contributes really anything <laughs> i mean I, well, I i don't think anybody's gonna see it yeah well I, I yeah i don't know i i mean maybe maybe some it was it was definitely in the smaller uh theater at, at the theater i went to um but there were people there who watched it um but um but yeah i don't know that it contributes anything or really or, or really even brings up anything very significant about the overall gun debate and i think part of that and, and 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 that's not that's not a knock against the movie at all i think the the i mean the gun debate itself is psychotic i mean it's just psychotic because the only because we see everything basically in a i mean we're we've been i i, I don't know i feel like in in the country in general it just feels like we've been conditioned almost to think of everything in 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 binary terms and the gun debate now is well one side thinks that you should own no guns at all. That's one side. And the other side is that you should own all the guns ever, 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 ever. Anything that's ever, you should have cannons and fucking everything. Right. Those are the only two positions I think that are even available <laughs> in the United States now. And that's, I think more indicative of how just insane uh, the country is than it is. Uh, like an actual intellectual um you know inquiry as to what you know what 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 does the second amendment mean what does the right to bear arms actually mean and what kind of arms should an average american citizen be able to be able to own nobody gives a shit about that it's just we you either no guns ever or all the guns and all the weapons fucking anywhere um it's just it's just stupid so i mean it's it's an insane debate and i don't think this movie adds anything to it uh, or 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 really is enlightening with <laughs> in in any respect um so yeah i don't know that so that i don't know i guess that's why that's why too it's it doesn't fucking i i don't find it remotely offensive and i don't find it uh really very intellectually engaging either so two and a half stars <laughs> That's kind of where you know, I the, am. The, the funny thing is that we're a half a star away from each other. I know. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> and I know. you are so... People shouldn't shouldn't <laughs> have any rights whatsoever. I, people should have no rights, no access to any guns, because how else is the government going to oppress you? You cannot have weapons. You I know am the a funny thing is through and through. <laughs> the funny thing is you actually can own a cannon in the United States. <laughs> That's great. Man, that's good news for one GFM IV, but. 
<laughs> oh, does he want one? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't think, I, I don't personally feel that the film contributes anything significant to that debate, which is fine. I don't think that's a movie's job in the fucking first place, so I, I just don't give a shit. Um, well, I think it's, yeah, I, it's more indicative of, you know, certainly we can look at like the Rotten Tomato score and we can look at how people um, who review movies professionally somehow, I don't know how you get that job, but there are people who do that um, and somehow manage to get paid for it. And I like I, I, I think there's definitely a conversation to have about like, how do you approach a film? How do you how do you propose? How do you approach a, a piece of art really in general and not, you know, what is the fucking value of your of your politics in that sphere and do you have to bring your fucking politics to just goddamn every aspect of everything that you ever see do you have to see that through the lens um of your politics that's a conversation i think fucking worth having but death wish the movie directed by eli eli roth i don't think it's offensive nor do i think it contributes anything significant um so so part of the reason why I bring it up is similar to the last thing that we talked about, which was Black Panther. Yep. There is some bullshit surrounding this movie. Sure. And, and part of it's because this movie has been delayed largely because of things that have nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get why Guns they are a did sensitive it. topic, you know? Yeah, of course. Of but, course, like it's a fucking but like Hollywood's we, a business. Yeah. If we live in a world where it's like someone got shot this week, we can't have action movies anymore. I know. Well, guess what? That means no more action yeah, movies. Ever. And we are definitely against that. Yeah. Oh god, fuck yes. You do not take that away is, my action movies. You do not take away my violent video games. You tempy son of a bitch. There's a senator here who or there's a I'm sorry, a congressperson here who's actually interested in the violent video games debate and that son of a bitch i don't get to vote I, for him. i don't think that you can't i don't think district, you but. i don't think there's i think that <laughs> i don't know how you prohibit people from buying video games that have violence I, it's in, it's psychotic um it's psychotic um, but 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 like it's hard not to see i mean they do go into it a little bit and it is a little it is fairly trite the way that they do but it was this movie was supposed to come out in November. Yeah, it got pushed back because of Las Vegas. Yeah, it comes out now a few weeks after. <laughs> yeah, uh, yet so another, <laughs> yet another mass shooting. Yeah. So, well, yeah, <laughs> but like this movie isn't about a mass shooter. No, I mean, he does shoot several people. Yeah, but. For the most part, it's it's pretty targeted. Yeah. And they all deserve it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I I I just don't I don't see why uh I don't I don't like the world that we live in that does not allow for the action movie or for uh people to defend themselves. Yeah. That seems... I mean neither do I, and I don't know. So it's hard to watch the movie without at least considering the context in which it is delivered. I, it, it is it is and i appreciate that but i think like I, I mean i mean i'm personally at a point where i i just i god damn it i don't give a shit like i don't give a shit because the idea that like you should be able to 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 to, to protect yourself that the idea that like there are fucking just there are sadistic people in the world there are fucking criminals um in the united states that is a fact of life um those things exist it, it, it that chicago at least the west and south side are such a fucking nightmare um like those are all legitimate things and i don't have a fucking problem with you with with people fucking reacting to them which i which which this movie and 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 in particular the original death wish that's what it was a reaction to manhattan was a fucking shit show in the 70s it was a fucking yeah. shit show um and that's what death wish was a, was a reaction to and it makes fucking perfect sense um it's it's designed to be a cathartic experience um 
and, and, and that's what this movie is. That's what a lot of action movies are, even just in general. Just these, that's what it's supposed to be. These cathartic experiences um, that are based on, that, that, that at least have some sort of, that has some genesis um, in, in the world in, in, in which we live. Um, there's no, I, There's nothing, let me put it this way. There's nothing remotely wrong with a piece of art um, engaging in an act of catharsis. That's what so much of it is supposed to fucking do in the first place. Um, so, you know, to judge it on that basis, I think is ridiculous. Um, it's just absurd. You're basically saying that art isn't supposed to be the thing it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's, you know, there are people who, who, who have actually ab- absolutely experienced crime in their own lives um, and, and and who have experienced home invasions and and Jesus Christ I couldn't even I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine that um like actually having to deal deal with something like that but I can tell you for fucking sure if I ever experienced something like that I would I would I mean you say it every goddamn introduct every every time we do one of these podcasts I would totally straight up want to fucking murder anybody who broke into my goddamn house um absolutely it's a natural it's a natural impulse it's a natural way to feel this is a movie that death wish is generally both the the original film and and this one um are movies that are designed to explore (laughs) those feelings which is there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that um and 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 as far as just 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 filmmaking in general you know i think this movie checks all the boxes it needs to check you know it's two and a half stars for me mostly because i think bruce willis turns in kind of a sort of a lame performance um but that's it I, you know i i think what what to me to me personally what's sad about where we are now is that we cannot we can't read books and we can't watch movies and we can't play video games without considering the politics like for some reason everybody has to bring that into the fucking equation and it really irritates and 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 i personally feel like that's the first thing that's brought in that's to me that's that's what's defining how we react to media in general the first priority is does this particular movie book whatever align with my own political worldview if it doesn't check those boxes, then it's bad, um, and and that sucks. <laughs> that fucking sucks. Well, it's, not, like, it's actually it's actually worse than that because a lot of times what's happening is you have like you have these different groups, right? Yeah. And and if you're in a group, as as Bill Burr says, you can go fuck <laughs> you're yourself. Right. You're all you already made a <laughs> mistake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And and the people at the top of these groups say, "Oh, this is the worst." Yeah. It's, and then, and then everybody down the line just parrots it. Yep. They don't, they don't see it for themselves. They don't make up their own minds. Yeah. It's just like, and it's it's not even like, well, I heard it wasn't very good, or I heard that it has this, and I don't know if I want to see that. It's this movie is evil. Yeah. It is capital. Yeah. E, e evil. Yeah. And. And anyone who would want to see it is is wrong. Yeah. Or, you know, book, person, uh, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and I that that is a super sad yeah. state of affairs. It's it yeah, it's yeah. It it is sad. It feels more bandwagony nowadays than I don't know, than anything else. And I don't know. I would like just, just you can have your you can believe I don't really give a shit, honestly, for the most part, what your stupid political or policy issues are, I think. But those are separate matters from movies, you know? I, I like yeah. I like Black Panther, and it's not because it's about a black person. Um, and I enjoyed Wonder Woman. Uh, it's not a fuck it's not the greatest movie ever. Um, it's not the best superhero film I ever saw. But I liked it, and it's not because it's not because it's about a lady superhero. Um, and I'm okay with Death Wish. That's my fucking opinion. I feel like Death Wish is an okay film. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, it just it has nothing to do. The, the, the political attitudes aside, I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I'm sure that my opinions about, you know, gun control may di- likely differ from yours, but I don't really think that that has anything to do with whether this movie is good or not. Um, Unfriend. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. And it's... Downvote. And yeah, and I would agree. Like you look at the rot, you look at the Rotten Tomatoes shit, and you look at the way people review this this movie, and it's fu- it's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. Um, it's just it's just re- it's just ridiculous. The the political stuff really that comes li- that's afterwards. It's, you first have to ask yourself, you know, is this a did generally it a yeah? Film? Is it did it work as a film? Is it generally is it a generally well told story is it pretty tight uh does it move along is it interesting are the characters well drawn are the performances pretty good you know all of that kind of stuff it's it's basic fucking movie making shit um sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but it's like if you haven't even addressed that then how do you call yourself a film critic like (laughs) you know no i i get it and in your preaching to the choir yeah i mean you look at a you look at a movie like braveheart yeah Braveheart is a movie that has almost nothing to do with reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Um, and yes, there was a man named Edward the Longshanks. Yep. And yes, there was a person named William Wallace. Yeah. And there is a place called England and Scotland. <laughs> yep. And they had and problems they... with each other. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where the similarities start to end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it just uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, yeah. If if you want, if you want to say, you know, Braveheart's a great movie because it's a great movie. Great. If you want to say, great, Braveheart's a bad movie because it's not historically accurate. I Fine. can also go along with you if you want to go. Down I mean, the I, road. if that's your basis for whether it's a good movie, that's a. I will call that a bullshit fucking basis. But yeah, like. If you want to, if you want to vote for Scottish independence because you saw Braveheart, then you're probably you may need to, idiot. yeah, you may need to think your position through a little bit more. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it just, it like it's, I, I do feel like, and and maybe this has always been true. It probably has always been true. Um, that you feel like you're in a place where. Like we're not even allowed to fucking enjoy movies or video games or just any of this shit without without first de- de- determining whether they align with with whatever your particular ideology is, um, and that sucks balls. Uh, that sucks balls. That's never been the function of art. That's never been its fucking purpose. It has never. It abs- it, it's, it's never had to meet that requirement. It's, it should never have to fucking meet that requirement, whether it aligns with your worldview or not. Um, God. Like, that's the, the... I don't know. That's what's so upsetting to me about... And it's pro- and honestly, it's probably not even unique to, to where we are now. This, it's, pro- it's probably been the case, generally, um, for the most, most part. But, like, I mean, the best art is designed to... Like the best art generally challenges you. I mean, just generally designed to be challenging. It should be things that you should be presented stuff that you have to actually fucking think about and engage with. It's just a person, just independent of ideologies and and and, and political alignments and all of that stuff. It's stuff you're supposed to engage with. Um on a human on an emotional level, on an in- intellectual level, whatever. Um that's what it's supposed to be. Um so you know it needs to meet that for it needs to get there first before you decide whether it's actually good or bad or whatever i mean i don't know it's just it it, it, it's just i don't know it's just it's depressing (laughs) this is not a bad movie it's also not a it's also not a great movie it's also not even it's it's a decent enough film and that's really all there is i think to to say about Death Wish starring Bruce Willis. It's a decent Yay. enough fucking movie. Yep. No, I 
I agree, and we're we're getting kind of off topic. Of course we are, because I'm three and, I'm three drinks in now. So, <laughs> and well, yeah, I've uh, pretty much zeroed out. <laughs> I I poured a, a taller than average uh, glass than I thought that we would need. Nice. Um, because I I hate to stop drinking when you're just getting going. <laughs> I appreciate that, but. Uh, I, I think we've we've pretty much hit on it. Oh, okay. The, the other stuff we're talking about is is mostly social. We social are, and and it's crap. I did have um, I I know there were two things. I can only remember one right now. Um, and the one is, did you find it interesting at all? Um, Bruce Willis's or, or, or I guess Eli Roth's decision to have Bruce Willis in a hoodie throughout the movie, like that that was kind of the hallmark. Of, no, really? I, I, I mean, I thought that was because it seemed it seemed a little bit deliberate because um, we talk. I mean, we talked about this, you know, certainly with Cage and obviously the hoodie has a sort of political significance with Trayvon Martin and all of that shit. Um, so that that decision struck me as somewhat intentional. I mean, I didn't again. Two and a half stars. I don't give a shit. It's but but at the same time, it did seem like maybe a little bit intentional that we have this white guy, this white vigilante, um, who has definitely clearly you know been killing black people, which was a point that was was raised in 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 one of those radio interview sequences, um, in the film. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. I, I I just thought it was at least slightly interesting, mildly interesting, moderately interesting. <laughs> Um, that they decided to have that as a part of his sort of persona. So I, I think the reason why they did it and was, was basically like, think of the two best ways to hide your face. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Well, yeah, the, the practical, the practical thing. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if you're going to look at it, it's going to be a baseball cap that you wear really low and down and avert your gaze. That's not going to be as good as a hoodie, which also wraps around. Yeah. Uh, wraps around your face. Yeah, whatever. I well, um, it, it, and in Unbreakable, actually, yes, it was like the rain, the sort of white, like, the raincoat thing, and the baseball cap. But anyway, uh, go ahead. There you yeah. go. <laughs> but like, I mean, in this, one of the one of the things that actually kind of uh, worked for the the cop subplot in this was a lady inexplicably filming at night with a cell phone camera and with no concern <laughs> at all for her own personal safety. That actually felt, takes, that actually felt completely apt. I watched that and I was like, yep, that's not, that feels exactly like what someone would do. Like, Well, I mean, I, it doesn't feel like something that someone <laughs> just, wouldn't do. Just think of the YouTube hits. Like <laughs> I might get shot, but, the, but can you but imagine the, the views? Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's great. That's I feel like that's pretty great. Um, <laughs> Even from a I, sort of satire perspective, like that's per, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, gosh, guys, I, I'm getting. I actually mad really, views I really love this. it when the <laughs> I, I actually really love when when it's like. It, we would really appreciate it if you didn't upload it to social media. Are you kidding? I already, I've already fucking done did it. that. <laughs> that was the first fucking thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> And, That's and then the yeah, <laughs> and then the cop just says like something Great. like fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I so I liked that. I'm sorry to interrupt you so much, but I also liked um the the memes that they did as well. Those felt like I liked the one like when your when your friend tells you Game of Thrones spoilers, <laughs> it's just Paul Kersey fucking executing that dude. Like that's perfect internet satire shit. That's good. That stuff was good. So, so like you, you look at that, and in order to preserve his anonymity, the the hoodie is the best. Yeah, option. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So the pragmatic. Also, yeah. the number of people who are going to be coming in with hoodies that are dead to a hospital <laughs> are high enough that sure. I'm not trying to say anything here. <laughs> I'm not. Shut up. Stop <laughs> laughing. I'm not. I'm mostly laughing because you're defending yourself against things that I haven't said. 
but I want to do you the favor of calling you a racist now so that you do have Shut to defend up, yourself. Viewer. There you go. <laughs> You're going to end up with a lot of hoodies. I own several hoodies. Me, They're all very comfortable. Me too. I have an X-Men hoodie. ACS I have a hoodie, UFP hoodie. Yeah. I've got all sorts. Yeah, it's good stuff. I got a League of Extraordinary. So, okay. So, uh, sure. The, the pragmatic thing, obviously. Obviously. You don't think that there's an intention beyond that, though? No. Okay. I think it it's simply in, in an attempt to modernize the story and deal with some... But as we've mentioned with the security system, not all yeah. uh, realities of modern life, uh, the hoodie is the best way for <laughs> Paul Kersey to hide his face. I, which I agree with. But what was weird about it, like while I was watching it, because I was like, he's always got this fucking hood up all the time when he's in the bar, like when he's in the bar, when he discovers that it's a it's a fencing operator, like all that shit, he's got the hood up. And then when he's at the nightclub at the end of the movie, he's got the fucking hood up at the entire it, the entire sequence, right? Which you're like, mm-hmm. when you enter the nightclub, right, and you have your hood up, at that point, you are calling more attention to yourself, right? Because n- literally no one else in that club has a fucking hood up, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, so within like, the context the of the movie, like, but if if you're talking about security cameras, which they do, sure, sure, and and the the point is like, if you go to a bar tonight or tomorrow or whenever, uh, if there are enough people in there, you're gonna find one person who looks pretty fucking shady, yeah, <laughs> and and he'll be doing like one of the two things we've talked about, <laughs> wearing his hood up or a baseball cap really low and averting his sure. eyes, and all this. Other stuff. So, like, I don't think it's that weird. And it's like, if I were, like, you know, get my dance on. Yeah. And then, like, some guy walks by in a hoodie, I I wouldn't immediately think, well, he's probably going to get into a gunfight. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I it, there, there was a part of me that's like, are they trying to take the hoodie back? Like, are they trying to, like, it's like, white people can wear hoodies, too. But then I was like, but nobody's suspicious of him in this bar. So that's weird. It's almost like you're saying... Like, if I was an asshole, if I was exactly the kind of person who I fucking hate, who watches movies like a piece of shit, I would suggest that this film uh, is, in fact, confirming that a white man can walk around in a hoodie without arousing any sus- any suspicion, just like he does in the nightclub and in the bar, um, that he can do that, right, because he's white and not black. If I was okay. a piece of shit... I could make that fucking argument. Um, do you do you remember the <laughs> do you remember the line from Hot Fuzz? He's like, "What's with this guy? Why is he always wearing his hood up?" <laughs> yes. What's the What's the answer? I don't remember. Because he's ugly as fuck. <laughs> well, it's Bruce Willis. I mean, he's great looking, but whatever. He is kind of old. Um, bags under his eyes a little more pronounced, but you know, um, it's Bruce Willis. He's fucking. He's fucking awesome, but not 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 really that awesome in this movie. But I don't know. I I thought that was inter- I thought I did think that was kind of an interesting, an interesting choice. Um, but but then at the same time, a a, a decision that I don't really care about because I don't really feel like this movie was trying to say I anything. I think that it is um, completely pragmatic. It is pragma- It is absolutely pragmatic. But there was a part of me that was wondering, especially with like the what I felt was kind of. Uh, I mean the the Milton Friedman stuff, right? You're like that's kind of a dog whistle for the right, you know. And it's like, is there a little bit of you that's like, I'm trying to attract the right with this hoodie thing? Like hoodies are gen or are, are race neutral, and white people can wear hoodies and fuck Trayvon Martin, like all that shit, you know. I mean, it could be, it could absolutely be seen as deliver as a deliberate attempt to like antagonize fucking way overly political people on the left um it may it can be it can be it's just like that's what mo- that's what movies are like fucking tactic angel this is why talking about movies in this sense is a goddamn waste of time it just had like it can be seen as that is that a legitimate interpretation i think fucking all day long if that's the interpretation that you want to invest in i think you're kind of a shallow piece of shit um, but 
And and that's why at the end of the day, is it a decent enough movie? Are the characters interesting enough? Is the plot tight? Is the plot fairly tightly written? Uh, is the movie executed generally well? Those are the questions you need to answer first. Uh, everything yeah. else is a fucking waste of time. Um, I, I I thought it was a little bit strange that they mentioned Milton Friedman. But <laughs> it seemed like at, a dog at, whistle to me. Like at at the same time, he is one of the preeminent uh, econo- economists of our time. Sure, sure, and and kind of a right wing darling. Um, you know, definitely someone who. I, I I mean that's that that felt like a dog whistle to me. I it, it felt in, they it's are, clearly intentional. They, they um, are in Chicago, it's clearly, which makes it a little bit less <laughs> obvious. But because you know Milton Friedman, as you recall, was uh, at the University of Chicago for a long sure. long time. So I don't know. So maybe he's just a hometown guy. I don't know. Whatever. I don't. It's a. I, I, Here's the thing of, <laughs> about Milton Friedman is I'm fairly certain I have never seen a lecture by Milton Friedman or read a book by Milton Friedman that even discusses firearms or pistols. Yeah. Or well, yeah, uses I would agree with words. that. But 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 at the same time, is he kind of a right wing darling? Is he a darling of the libertarian right? You know, yes, I think yes. God damn it, yes. And is Hollywood capable of fucking appealing to those people? Is Hollywood capable of, of, of making films that are designed to appeal to people of that political persuasion? Fucking yes. Um, and, 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 and they'll do it. And <laughs> at, the same time, at the same time, Bruce Willis did say it was boring. Well, Bruce Willis is, is, is yeah, that's true. Which is true. I think anyone would appreciate that joke. <laughs> Um, what Milton Friedman is boring economics is fucking boring boring. yes (laughs) like yeah I think that's a reasonable enough piece of parody piece of self I don't know it's a reasonable enough joke the other thing now I remember the second point that I want that 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 I did actually want to bring up which did kind of bother me a little bit um this idea um so the so 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 you know part of the appeal of this movie, part of its ideology, part of the thing that like does that 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 um, motivates Bruce Willis's character to to take up take up this this vigilanteism, this idea that like he needs to protect his own, you know, um, because the cops aren't going to be able to do it for him, uh, and we see you know throughout the film, and and I think we've got like two detectives who are who are pretty fairly portrayed, I think. Um, but that, um, you know, they can't get the salute. They can't get the end. They can't bring these fucking guys to justice, right? Because they don't have enough evidence. And what kind of bothered me is that, like, the thing that 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 Bruce Willis figured out, right? The thing that 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 he was able, the, how he was able to 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 pursue his wife's killers, was that he found the fucking his watch on. MJ's fucking body in this movie, right? He figured that out and he got MJ's phone and he was able to track all of that shit down on his own. And it's like, well, (laughs) the police didn't have that fucking evidence. You didn't turn any of that over. You didn't explain fucking one iota of that to the cops. So it's like, there's a part of me that's like, that feels like, you know, the police in this film the whole process of the whole idea that the state is supposed to be able to protect you, that they have these institutions in place to protect its citizens. And you have a citizen who is deliberately bucking that, who is like, I have this evidence that I'm not sharing with. And somehow the police are still at fault. Somehow the bureaucracy is still the problem. I mean, that just seems a little unfair to me. And yet another thing that the film didn't really question, didn't really recognize Right. With respect to vigilanteism, with respect to even the self-defense argument, if you've got a fucking private citizen who is bucking the goddamn citizen, the, 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 or I'm sorry, bucking the system by not sharing evidence, by not giving as much as he can to the police to, to, to pursue and track down and, 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 and obtain an arrest on these people who have done this crime, right? 
That's not like that's not. It's just bull. It's just bullshit. It's not. It's not a fucking reasonable criticism at that point. The police aren't going to be able to protect you. Well, yeah, they're not going to be able to protect you if you don't fucking share the information that you have. If you don't fucking cooperate with the investigation, of course they're not. That's you know. Well, I, I mean, of course I that's say, part of the problem. Like, I I will say this. Um, they they do talk about this just a little bit, and it's not. It's not directly in relation to anything that Bruce Willis's character does, but uh, what is it? They the ice cream man gets shot, and they walk out there, right. and they're like, 30 guys saw this guy, and walk nobody up. says anything, right? Because nobody cooperates. And, and the only yeah, the only description we can get <laughs> is a white guy in a hoodie. Yeah, that's there's three million people <laughs> in the city that meet that description. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I, 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 you do get a little of that. I understand from bit. from Bruce Willis's character, it makes a little bit less sense because he has a vested interest in maybe the crime yeah. being solved. And I get and I get it, but like when he decides to not share that information with the police, that's a selfish decision. That's a self centered decision. That's a decision that I want. I want to take these motherfuckers out. It's not a legitimate criticism of the bureaucracy of like the police department or the bureaucracy of the state in general. It's just, yeah, I have this piece of data that has led me to this person. I like, and that's what's so I think to, to me, like that's what gets a little frustrating in this film. And that's why I hesitate again. This is this two, a half, two and a half star rating. Like this is what, this is what makes it not a very good movie. As, as far as, you know, what is its contribution to the overall, like, political or social argument? Um, you can't fucking withhold really solid information from the police and still somehow expect them to, to, to be able to do their fucking jobs. Like, it's stupid. It, the, the, the individual who is a victim of the bureaucracy of the state is himself withholding vital information from the state like it's it's a fucking retarded arc it's a retarded distinction at that it's just a stupid argument at that point um yeah and i get it it's like if you don't trust the state you don't trust the state but but, you know but fine but at that point the movie's already moving he's already gone into his video which which yeah and and, and yeah and 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 all of that's and all of that's legitimate but then at the same time it's like he never questions like I can't believe the police can't fucking do magic and figure out like who the bad guy is. Uh, but meanwhile, I get this piece of data who points me that points me in in the exact right fucking direction um, that I don't share with them. Uh, you know, it's just it's just it's just stupid. And but the movie like this this is the point I'm making. The movie doesn't give a shit about that. The movie doesn't fucking investigate that or interrogate that action at all. Which is fine. I don't need it to. But that's the thing that, but that's the thing that, like, I'm not going to give it, like, props, well, right? For, I mean, it's for, not important. You know, it's not important to the movie because the movie's really more about people. Well, it is about, and, it is about people. It, and this has it understandable is. characters. <laughs> yes, yeah, it does. Yeah. Which is and, fair. And they're, it's just they're fair. pretty, pretty well portrayed and you really feel for them. And therefore, it is a good. More movie. or less, yeah. I mean, Bruce Willis, I don't know. But the, everybody else, yeah. But, yeah. Because I don't really understand Bruce Willis's fucking... Because, I, I don't know, I just, his performance wasn't wasn't much of anything for, really to write I was about, glad that but. he didn't get too into the I'm a likable funny guy. I... Because uh, yeah. <laughs> he does kind of have that... Uh, he does that very well. He does that... And, ex- and you see yeah. it'll... You see it a lot. You see it in, in comedies like The Whole Nine Yards, uh, yeah. Hudson Hawk, things like that. Uh, you also Hawk. see it. <laughs> Hudson Hawk. Does anybody, you don't like, does anybody like that movie? <laughs> I like that movie. I do too, kind of. <laughs> we're going to kill... We're going to kill you. We're going to kill everyone you know. We're going to kill... <laughs> The girl you took to high school prom. I can give you an address for that. <laughs> uh, good stuff. I like.
like that movie. What's wrong? I do they, too. I'm not. I do. I do too. But <laughs> they're singing Frank the whole time. It's great. It's a ridiculous movie. Who doesn't like Frank? Terry Gilliam, man. You know. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, he does it also. He does it also in you know his action films. He does it in in uh, Die Hard and Die Hard Two and Die Hard Three. Yeah. And Die Hard. Four Die Hard. Die the Hard fucking five. abominations after Die Hard Three. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really anything after Die Hard 1 you don't really need to see. Now, listen, but, I'm but they don't start to get it. Die Hard until. 3 is an amazing film. Uh, like I don't give a fuck if I'm the only person who thinks that, but Die Hard 3 is I think essential action film viewing. Come on. Simon says that whole plot line is fucking fantastic. I love all of that. Mm. Oh, I love it. I'd have to go back and watch it again. It's so good. Seuss, fucking Samuel L. Jackson. How do you... Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis together in a fucking action movie called Die Hard. I'm Um, I'm trying to think here. Oh, no. They were doing Simon Says in... uh, in, uh, What is it? Uh, Stallone. Demolition Man, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because his name was Simon. Yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. And I was like, I don't Simon know, says, I don't die. <laughs> oh, Wesley Snipes. Man. Oh, man. That movie's so good. It's so good. The, so good. You're going to regress this the rest of your life. <laughs> Both seconds of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to say about the top of your hand? <laughs> no, I don't. Death Wish, whatever the fuck, go see it or don't. I don't give a shit. This is a decent movie. So that's go fine. see it. It's an action movie. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's it is fine. not 16%. <laughs> it's fine. No, no. Fuck no. The Rotten Tomato score is horseshit. Absolutely. But yeah. All right. Well, we're going to call that episode number 48. Of the Wednesday Night Gentlemen Multimedia Empire official podcast, please feel free to give us a like if you've enjoyed this video or subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can find us over on Twitter where we are at WNG underscore MME underscore OPC. And you can also head on over and find us on Facebook where we are simply the Wednesday Night Gentlemen. Thank you everyone for listening and we will see you again on episode 49 of this podcast where we talk about Jessica Jones. Bye-bye.